Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. And seeing as it's been a while since I've changed my shirt again, let's go and do that now. Actually, I think this one's a bit small. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, like many of my nerd brethren, I love Star Wars. Like many of my contemporaries, I played with Lego in my youth. So, when developers Traveller's Tales took these two franchises and put them together, it was a spectacular success. Yes, the House of Love details its first game, Lego Star Wars. Hey, did you say Lego Star Wars? I love that game! Ah, Miss Sersamersa. Glad to see you've recovered from your crippling afflictions. Oh, it was just a headache. Or two. For a week. Or so. Anyway, you said Lego Star Wars. Indeed I did. Allow me to introduce you to a trilogy of four about a saga of six. Released in 2005, 2006, and 2011 respectively, the LEGO Star Wars games take the plot of the Star Wars saga and add a healthy dollop of humour, and a raft of secrets, unlockables, mini-games, and diversions, as well as some well-crafted levels based on the Star Wars universe itself. So grab your lightsabers and get set up for your attack run, because we're playing LEGO Star Wars. LEGO Star Wars 1 covers the prequel trilogy. Now, a lot of people dislike these three movies. Intensely, in some cases. I was never so critical, and have found much to love based off this game. And I may devote an episode to arguing why they deserve another chance at a later date. Anyway, the game translates each of the three movies into roughly six sections. Five for episode two, or chapters. Each chapter translates to a sequence such as on board the Trade Federation ship from Episode 1, or the Geonosian Arena where the Clone Wars begin in Episode 2. Also, I should give special mention to the Nintendo Game Boy Advance version, programmed by Gryptonite Games, who were at the time a part of Amaze Entertainment. Playing out in an isometric viewpoint, while it is of course less advanced, and noticeably shorter than its counterpart, especially in Episode 2, which weighs in at a positively anorexic three levels. It is still an interesting game in its own right. LEGO Star Wars 2 covers the beloved original trilogy. Again, the game takes these three films, squeezes them into six chapters each, and sprinkles with humour, and a wealth of mini-games and distractions on the side. Amaze Entertainment also gave us a Nintendo Game Boy Advance version which was slightly different to the rest. While it shared an isometric viewpoint with its predecessor, it had more of the core gameplay of the home versions and fewer bonuses, minigames, and distractions. Amaze also developed the Nintendo DS version, which had the 3D models of the home versions. That said, both the Advance and the DS versions had level redesigns to better fit their respective systems. There was also a version of this game developed for mobile phones, but it only covers Episode 4 and has limited characters. Also, from what I've seen of it, it appears to be mostly bog-standard block pushing, so not very interesting. Let's instead take a sideways step to the third game in the series. Later gen consoles, like the PS3 and the Xbox 360, received this remixed compendium of the first two games. Also released on PC and, as the name implies, complete, the complete saga covers all six episodes of the story while throwing in all new bonus levels and challenges. The Nintendo DS port was developed by a subdivision of Traveller's Tales called TT Fusion. Surprisingly, they managed to make the closest conversion yet of the game cramming nearly all of the power into a single camera view, though we lose the vehicle levels to an identical overhead view. However, with that aside, the complete saga is a marvel, uniting the old with the new. A 
And so we come to the latest in the franchise. As has been mentioned, this features a lot of the same style of play as other entries in the series. However, the ante is upped with several new game features, most of which are accessed through the vastly expanded Hub World system, featuring space challenges and both Separatist and Republic ships to explore. The missions themselves have been upgraded with a Meanwhile system, allowing you to take control of either of two simultaneous situations at some points. There are also rts battle maps, where you take control of a side to build bases and wage war. Again, the DS port was handled by TT Fusion, but much of the home content was replaced by minigames. Plus, the hub was shrunk down to a mere few rooms on a Republic cruiser. So that's LEGO Star Wars. Or at least the franchise to date. And come on, it's LEGO, it's Star Wars, of course I'm going to put this in the House of Love! As the game that kick-started the LEGO license franchise, LEGO Star Wars 1 is surprisingly underwhelming. And yet, even without all the bells and whistles of later incarnations, it does what many consider to be the impossible. It makes you care about these protagonists. And the humour is charming and respectful. Never mean. I love these games. I love how they can tell the story without having to use a single line of dialogue. Not even a word. I love the number of different characters. I love how you can play if you're 8 or 20. I love how the different Jedi use different lightsaber forms, and I love how you have to play with everyone to complete the game. Jedi, Sith, droids, blaster-toting queens, even Jar Jar Binks, who's much less annoying when he can't talk. And as much as I like GTA Vice City, I love how nobody swears, or headshots passers-by, or solicits ladies of the night, or, you know, acts like a homicidal psychopath. Say what you will about Star Wars, and many people surely will, but these games will bring out the gushing fanboy in all of us. Lego Star Wars rules. So thanks for watching. And thanks to Miss Sursa Mercer for stopping by to help out. Join me next week for more fun and frolics. And may the Force be with us all. And the last word goes to Miss Sursum Ursa. Why, thank you, Mr. Funky Monkey. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye bye.